Can y'all hear that? Probably not. I hope not. Once I come through the audio, the neighbors pull filters to make no weird sound. I might need to send them a text. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. So, hope you're doing well. I'm great. Mostly garden tour time. Maybe a day late. I don't even know. What is time? Everything's just a bore right now. I have been gone for the last 10 days. I mean, I've been here, but I've been gone. I had a family member in the hospital. Everything's fine, but it was just important for there to be familiar faces around because it's a memory issue going on. So I haven't been here. I've watered plants twice in the last 10 days and uh, haven't planted anything new. So there's probably going to be some dead plants. There's probably going to be a lot of weeds. And the perk to all this on a positive note is a lot of what everybody's seeing is going to be a surprise to me too. So you can be getting some general reactions to what the heck is going on in the garden because I have not had a moment to look. Things are just now starting to simmer and settle back down. Because like I said, everything's fine. But it's just life. Life things are happening. I'll talk about that a little bit more. Not much in next week's video. I did have a surprise the day of the hospital discharge when things were going to be pretty chaotic. Getting this person home and taking care of and everything. I also got a text message from the palm tree company saying, hey, on the way, be there in a few hours with the palm trees. So the palm trees are here. Filmed some of it. It'll be in next week's video. For now, I would just walk around, have a look at things. Maybe I'll pull some weeds along the way or maybe I'll say screw it. I don't have time for that right now. I don't know. We're just going with the flow. Normally I like to go through and emphasize what's changed between, what would it be, the April and May garden tour. Because there are some people who don't really watch the regular videos just pop in for the garden tours, but like I said, everything's a blur. Aviary, that's new. Nothing else has happened with it yet because, like I said, I haven't been around, but I need to get some latches. I'm going to put a latch up here, a latch at the bottom, and one that actually works in the middle. They put a latch on it that just, it does nothing. That's, what, what the heck? It's fine. I got this knowing that I was going to have to make some modifications. I think it's cute. The palm tree's not staying in there. I just, I had to find a spot for it, so that's for some reason where I said it, I don't know why. They showed up with the palm trees and I decided I had a few moments to just have some fun. So I started moving some things around. I wanted to put the Robolini palm over there. I'm gonna put the Robolini palm over there. It shaded the Pindu. So I, just, I guess I decided that inside the aviary was where I was gonna set the Pindu. I don't, that's not where it's staying. The willow planters are looking great, aren't they? I have to say, I think that this is where I peak for the year. We're just getting going into the growing season, but I, it's hard to imagine things getting much better than this. They're just beautiful. These are the uh, rainforest sunrise hostas, I believe. Some licorice plants in the front and river blue hydrangeas with these wonderful harlequin braided willows in the back. They have been doing surprisingly well in the full sun. The willows I knew would do well in the full sun. The hostas is kind of a back and forth because you just, well, you never know with hostas. It said that they were a part sun to shade. There's a lot of sun over here, but I guess it just hasn't been quite hot enough to do much damage to it. In fact, one of them's even flowering. The flower is set pretty low, not very high, but that's okay. It's still cute. Nice big flowers, too, for a hosta. I was expecting the willows to just dehydrate constantly because they're willows and they're in a container. And yeah, that's just the willows. They do that. They're very thirsty plants, but so far they've actually been pretty good. I've only had to water these every couple of days. And like I said, I haven't been around much and somehow they haven't been throwing a fit. I think we've had just the right amount of rain to keep them going. That is something that always makes a big difference. The bamboo planters. Those are, well, they're looking good. This one over here to the left, the bamboo needs to be staked up, those two pieces. But otherwise, those have done great. They've been tucked away back over here into the spruce tree for the last couple of months since the patio was resurfaced and had to move everything off. And then they were tucked away in there. And I said, I'm going to leave them there because they put up all this new growth and typically with bamboo, we end up having storms that are really bad and it ends up bending the new shoots before they start to harden off. You know, they come up pretty soft and that worked really well for this one over here. Look at all that new growth, tons of new growth. They are big, really big, done a lot of growing, but this one over here, apparently there are still two weak shoots on there. I'm just going to end up pulling them up, putting them in there. Nothing's been underplanted with annuals yet. Like I said, haven't been here. I haven't planted anything since whenever the last video was that I was planting things. So that's, this is welcome to this is my world of chaos. I still have plants in the growth space. My gosh, things are, I was ahead and now behind, but that's all right. Just got to go with the flow of things and make things happen. Queen palm's looking good. I think as far as the palm trees go, since they just got here and I haven't had much of a chance to look at them, I'm going to save doing 
much talking about them for the vlog that will come out this Saturday after this video because I'm going to be working with them, moving them around, planting them up and everything in that video. But here you can see them. There it is. This one's crooked. That's the guy. I don't know. I'm going to have to have a buddy come over and we'll shift it and move it. Get that all fixed up. Eureka Palm over here is looking great. Jeez, I didn't even take a breath between the two. Can you tell I'm a little bit wired right now? So much going on. But like I said, things are calming down. Uh, it's adjusting well. Sometimes I move this Eureka Palm outside and it throws a bit of a fit. Not really much of a fit. It's just I don't really acclimate it. It takes a long time to acclimate the Eurekas to full sun when they've been inside in the growth space. I'm talking like six to eight weeks. I don't have time for that. So I generally just stick it in the sun. Some of the fronds scorch and then they flush out with new growth and I cut that off. It's just, it ends up being about really like two weeks shorter <laughs> doing it that way than if I were to try and take six weeks to acclimate it because I don't have much shade out here in the springtime. So there aren't even many options for acclimating it. It's just, it's, you gotta come out. And that's what I've been doing for years and it's been fine. It's looking really good. Very big and full. I love that Eureka Palm. I was so happy when I moved that outside to see how well it was doing. I really like what's going on over here on the steps. This was just all by happenstance. I picked up plants and set them down and I like how that came out. I didn't put much thought into it. It just looks nice. Have those rodeos over here in the Alpinia back here. It would probably make more sense to flip those. Those rodeos got me inspired though. I was going to plant up the front of this bed where all of these sun impatiens got planted maybe three or four weeks ago with some Tradescantia, the Nanooks, or a Nanook variant. They're sitting right there. I brought them out, just haven't gotten them in the ground yet. Those are all things we will be working on when I'm done filming this video. But what if I were to fill this in with rodeos instead? I think that would look really, really nice. I, I'm going to need a lot of them, but that's okay. That could be fun. I'm all right with going to a nursery and buying a whole bunch of plants. That's never something I'm going to throw a fit about. Just throwing that out there. I have a James Britannia. That's, I don't know why. Just sitting on the patio. Don't know why. Who knows? I'm sure there was a reason. I probably had a sprinkler going and it needed water. So I just threw it down there so it would get hit by the sprinkler. Drip is still a mess. I haven't even approached <laughs> a point where I can wrap my head around spending the time to work out the details to reset my drip. So things are still sitting there. Hopefully... That'll be happening this month because, of, well, it's June at this point when this video comes out and it's time to get the drip set up. Well, the next two weeks, that's a goal I'm setting for that. Bananas are coming along, looking nice. Not quite as big as I would usually hope for them to be this time of year, but it was sort of an odd spring. It was mild, but cool. So it was nice and warm back in March and then April was just kind of meh, but it was enough that it got them moving up and out of the ground, but then they sat still for a minute. And even May has actually been pretty cool as well. Some plants that have done a lot of growing though, I'm moving on to things with the camera before my mouth is, I'm sorry. The cannas, these banana cannas, wow. I mean, it's May right now and they're already a good seven to eight feet tall. They're loving life, looking great. And, and this whole area got a lot of weeds. There's going to be a lot of weeds in this video. I have not touched a thing thing in nearly two weeks. That's just the part of it. You're getting the raw garden deal here. But this whole area is looking pretty good. The sable miners, they had a good amount of winter damage and they're popping up new big fan fronds, left and right sable miners. These are also called a dwarf palmetto, scrub palm, blue stem palm, pretty hardy. They've been nice, tough plants. I have in, oh, almost called it an alocasia. I don't know why. This is called alocasia redemption planted right here in the middle. I also at one point had a pharaoh's mask in here that I thought was dead, but it started to put up some new growth a couple of weeks ago and then it fizzled back out and went down. And then the Waikiki that I planted in here last year threw up a leaf and it went, it fizzled and went down. So I don't, who knows what's going to be growing over here. There's all kinds of things. This is an area where in the late summer into early fall, if there are plants that I haven't gotten into the ground, then I just kind of stick them in over here because it's a nice warm corner to get them through the winter. Then I wait for them to go ahead and pop back up in the springtime and then I move them. So I'm hoping that those will pop up and I'll be able to do something else with them. I'm thinking that this redemption is going to look really good over here. I even, I like the color of the, look at that foliage. So even though they don't have the crazy red veining on them yet, the foliage is still really pretty on those. Right next to those, I planted the Pharaoh's Dream, which I talked about in a video a few weeks ago whenever I got it. And uh, it hasn't done a ton of growing because it showed up very small. Considering how small it showed up, it's looking pretty good. Not getting a ton of sun right now. I need to go through and all these bikini teenies that are in the front of the beds, I need to pull them out. I'm going to let those grow in the back 
they really, they'll fill in this entire space over here. So anything in the front, I have to pull. So that's been shading, the Pharaoh's Dream. I left the tag in here so I can show you. They have a more cupped leaf on them with that white veining and a hint of pink in the center and supposedly going to be hardy here. That's the main reason I wanted them. That is going to be such a wild, dramatic looking plant to be hardy into 6B7A. Time will tell. I got it planted early enough. It has all season to get going and get established. I still have one more left to plant in another area that we'll talk about later. All the sun impatience and everything over here are looking really good. They are very shaded. They have been since the palm trees got here yesterday. That's only one day and I think that's fine. I planted these up, alternating the purple candy and red candy sun impatience with the hot coral. That's the orangey colored one that's in there. These have put on a good 50% size since I got them in the ground, which is pretty good because they haven't been in the ground very long. I imagine that in just a couple of weeks, those are going to start to get that mounded, rounded shape to them. And it's going to just be beautiful. Just a rainbow of that purple and red and coral orange color. Lots of color. Just so much color. I usually just do two colors and this year I did the three and I'm liking it. It's a little bit more of a mind game and <laughs> trying to keep it straight when planning it out more for the shopping part, right? When we're going, okay, well, I'm gonna need this many for these areas when you're doing three, but it worked out really well. I cannot wait to see what those end up doing. In the foreground, I planted Super Tunia Per, no, 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 no. These are not Super Tunia Persimmon. Who, who, wait, who are you? Crazy Tunia, Mayan Sunset, alternating with some uh, just Marguerite sweet potato vines. I wanted to find the Carolina sweetheart. I couldn't find them, so that's just, that's what I got. Those potato vines are gonna get pretty big. I'm gonna regret it. I already know I'm gonna be mad at myself in a month or two because I'm gonna be constantly trimming on them. But I think that having some big, bold, chartreuse foliage in front of those sun impatience is going to make a big difference as far as having some contrast and defining the edge of everything instead of just having a just big wall and blurb, is that the word, of color over here. This is going to help make things look somewhat more defined. And the crazy tunias are doing well. I was on the fence when I planted them, talked about that a lot in the video where I planted them because I was thinking about maybe doing the waves in the ground because the crazy tunias have different genetics to them. So I wasn't sure how they would do, but so far they're looking pretty good. It's only been a couple of weeks. They haven't had to deal with much adversity because the weather hasn't really been really hot and it hasn't been raining a lot, but it's been raining like just enough. They seem good with it. Uh, here's some more palms. These are the Adenidia palms. Like I said, I'm going to go over these in much more detail in the video when I mess with all the palm trees. But these two Adenidia palms were in the Miami planters, which are the planters on each side of the steps over there. Those blue ones, I pulled those out in the fall, put them into these larger containers and sent them off to the greenhouse and they look pretty good. I'm actually pretty surprised. I'm looking forward to getting those potted back up or over into those nicer containers. Double trunk Edenidia, it's looking good. Nothing has shown up looking like it has any kind of mealybugs or spider mites. I maybe see some scale on these Gossia palms over here, but it looks like it's the old shells of the scale. I've not seen anything that looks like it's active and alive. The bird of paradise, look at this thing. It's done great. I have to come in and cut this front off. You know, it's in a greenhouse, so the wind is something it hasn't experienced in a while but it has, <laughs> has this leaf that goes all the way up there. And uh, one little breeze knocked that down, but it has a growth point in there. Can you see it? I don't know if you can. So I need to be very careful at coming in here and cutting this right here because this is now the new growth point all the way up there. So I need to let that down very, very gently. If I had realized the growth point was that high, I don't think I even would have picked it up. That probably wasn't a great idea. Hopefully I didn't just do permanent damage to the plant. I think it'll be okay. Gassias, they're fun. They have their fun little fat trunks on them. Those will be going on each side of the steps over here where those willow planters are. The willow planters will be going to the front porch and I have big blue planters. There's one over that has the spring grove arbinate. Uh, this, bana this banana is not potted or planted. It's still in a pot so that's why it looks like that. End set that was overwintered in the garage last winter. Looking pretty good. It's only been in the ground for a couple weeks and it's thrown out I think probably three or four new leaves. Something along those lines. The Kokopo <laughs> banana is I don't know. It's banana ink. The bananas are being bananas. They're growing. There isn't much to say about them yet. I've been fertilizing lightly with them, just trying to keep them watered. You know, it's bananas. Next month, they should be double the size, at least, I would hope. Thai giant, Leucocasia. Look at that. Actually getting some growth out of it. The last several of these I planted have rotted away, and I have not known why. So this year, I ordered them from a lot of different places to try and see if I could get some genetic diversity within them. 
and uh, it seems to be working out. They're looking pretty good. I also made sure to plant them higher in the ground. I'm wondering if maybe the one I had out here last year got planted too deep because I planted it in place of some plants that I dug up and the ground settled around it. And I, maybe that was part of the issue with the one last year. The ones prior to that, I don't know what the issue was. I used to be able to grow these things nice and big, but the last few years have just been growing for like a month or two and then they just bleh. It could also be because the trees have grown, so there's not quite as much sun out here as there used to be. Dune grass coming in wonderfully. There's also some nut sedge in there that I need to pull that happens every year. That's just part of this area. One of the eucamus is coming up. Just one. I talked about in the last garden tour, I had a huge clump of these eucamus sparkling burgundy over here, and I divided them up, planted a whole row of them right here last year, and it looks like only one of them survived the winter. Major Wheeler honeysuckle, you can't really see it because... Well, it's back there, but it did a great job blooming for me. It's going to rest for a few weeks, and then this whole fence wall area is going to be covered in those bright pink flowers again. It's one of my favorite plants out here. I love the show that that puts on what's in full effect. That was planted behind me uh, way back on the other side of the yard, and I dug it up a few years ago, moved it over here, and it took a couple years to get going again. We're finally back to where we left off before I dug it up, and it's flourishing. Really, I actually, I need to add some trellising to this fence so we can keep going up and over instead of now where it's falling down and starting to creep around in the garden. Oh, the giant beach ball, it's one, it's just, it's fun. It's cool, but it helps keep the ducks out of the pool and the grackle birds working really well. It's keeping them from getting in there and pooping all over the place. Up here, man, look at, see what I was talking about? Look at all those weeds. That's gonna be satisfying. I'm actually looking forward to pulling those. I'm gonna be on that either tonight or tomorrow morning. I'm trying to think of stuff that I've done out here that you would need updates on. I suppose, over here, there's this Tradescantia that was in a plant hall. Right here, it's the JS Brainstorm. It's supposed to be one that flowers really, really well. So it should keep putting up these purple flowers basically until fall, is what they said. I also have a polar green Colocasia back here. Uh, we'll see about that. Might be a pink china. Don't know, but they're calling it polar green. They're saying it's harder to zone five. We will see. Next to it, a Leucocasia gigantea. I put one on each side of the steps here. That is purely a privacy thing. I know it seems weird to go and have the Colocasia there and then the Leucocasia with the Alocasia borneo giants behind them, but it's all about filling in the spot with great big leaves because, well, it's awkward over here and I want to fill it in with great big leaves. That's what that comes down to. Don't like seeing the back of my neighbor's house. It's weird and it's awkward. Oh my gosh, these weeds. There's so many. I would start pulling them, but there are some weeds in here that have really big spines on them. So I want to wait until I go inside and grab my gloves. Nothing looks like it's going to flower just yet, so I'm not all that worried about it. And some of these aren't weeds. Some of these are just volunteer natives. I'll leave those. I don't like to pull those up. There's an acanthus back here. <laughs> Planted a whole bunch of those this year. That's all new. I don't think any of that was in April. These are acanthus mollus oak leaf. Yeah, they have a really nice long... Why am I showing you on this one? That's a medium size from Monrovia. You can order them three different sizes. Okay, you can get them in a one gallon, which is the number one, a two and a half or three gallon, which is the number two. And then what I think is a five gallon pot and they label that as the number three. I ordered them in all of the different sizes. This is the largest size that I got. So I'm gonna show you this one to start with, although I technically already started by showing you the other one. Nice long serrated leaves, deep and glossy, and they have big, beautiful flower spikes that come up on them. I have the big one planted right here. I planted another one over here. And then the one you saw up there, as well as a few others that are over in the landscape on the other side of the yard. I'm spreading them out as much as possible because I just kind of want to see where their sweet spot is. This yard can be challenging sometimes with plants that like part shade because, I don't know why I said like a question, part shade can be challenging sometimes because it, th there's a lot of sun out here up until really late July into August and then it's very shady like down here it's only like one o'clock in the afternoon and there's a lot of shade whereas this would have been full blazing sun just a few weeks ago because the trees flushed back out that's just the way that goes right trees provide shade but then you also have to factor in the trees flush out and then <laughs> the sun shifts and I live at the bottom of a hill too so it can be a challenge that's why I spread them around so much just some trying to find out where their sweet spot's going to be in the yard, and then I'll probably plant more wherever the sweet spot seems to be. Coconut palm. Looking okay. When it came outside, I realized it had a lot of spider mite damage on it. I knew that it was dealing with spider mites throughout the winter, and I was spraying with neem and kept knocking them down. They'd come back, knocking them down, they'd come back. But when I got it out to the natural sunlight, 
I was really able to see all of the speckling and, you know, the spider mite damage. So I don't really know how much of a difference it makes, but I have it set aside from the rest of the plants. But there, I mean, there are plants everywhere, so you can only move it so far. I'm not seeing anything on here, so I'm pretty sure that that problem is resolved. So just going to have to wait for it to push out some new growth and get going. I'm just happy it did well over the winter. You know, coconuts, you never really know how they're going to do inside. It kept growing, put out, I think, two maybe three new fronds which isn't bad smaller size coconuts aren't as hard to keep when they're smaller all casey at blizzard over here standing up responding well to its new potting this got repotted in a video maybe a week or two ago it's already starting to really take to the new container it's getting nice and sturdy in there have a couple little fried eggs over here just hiding out in the shade waiting to be planted up those are probably going to go in the miami planters i need to stay on what i'm talking about before moving on yeah, probably going to go into the Miami planters, uh, which are the ones I said I was going to put the Adenidia palms in. But I haven't made up my mind yet. This agave over here, which is the Loki, is starting to look better. It got some sun scorch on it this spring, but I moved it over here where it's getting morning light and afternoon shade. That's adjusting better. I just, I don't know why. It just didn't occur to me to adjust that one to the sun, which is just dumb. I don't, why, why would I do that? That was stupid. It's not normally how we do things, right? Laurel hedge. It's looking pretty good, right? Kind of wonky. It had some die off this winter. I thought that it had soared through because I kept it covered with the frost cloth blanket things and put lights on them when we had a cold snap. But sometimes it takes time. Usually sometimes between a March, really, between March and May is when the cold damage sometimes comes out on the broadleaf evergreens. There's some stuff I need to prune out in there. They're starting to put out new growth. So you can see all the light green that's on there. This hedge has been different than the hedge that was here prior it's the same plant just skip laurels but this group seems to grow in more stages or maybe they're just better growers because the ones that i had here before were smaller than this for one when they got killed down by the winter which is actually an irrelevant point to any of this that didn't matter but their pattern their growth pattern was they would flower in late winter early spring more into early spring and then they would put on like 8 to 12 inches sometimes a little bit more fresh green growth and then that would be it for the whole year this is this hedge's second flush of fresh growth which is good because i was actually pretty disappointed with what it put out after it finished flowering i'm glad to see that it's putting out even more stuff get a couple more feet of growth on these and start pruning on them they're gonna look pretty good down in front of the hedge I added some hydrangeas. This whole area gets planted up with impatience and has a lot of color in it. I haven't done that yet because, you know, all the stuff I've been talking about. I thought it would be nice to get some perennial color in here, and these are awesome hydrangeas. They are game changer hydrangeas. So I think only a few of them actually have some open buds on them, but they're all getting ready to put on a show. Look at that. Aren't those flowers beautiful? They have really, really big heads on it and this is still relatively small these will generally go about 30 inches high by 30 inches wide so they're not really really big but they just flower and flower and flower and they're hardy i believe all the way to zone five maybe zone four with protection so they should be good here as long as they're getting enough morning sun that's something i'm going to have to keep an eye on i was on the fence about planting them here so this is kind of an experiment Right, because like I said, I mentioned when I was over here, I should have kept on that before moving into the coconut palms, shouldn't I? I was interrupted. I had a meeting that went for about an hour and a half, so that's why things got disorganized there. But um, I, what was I, I don't know what I was talking about. The sun, yeah. I don't, there's going to be plenty of sun to wake them up from their winter dormancy and to get them moving and to probably get a month or so of flowering out of them. What I'm really curious about is how they're going to perform here moving into July and August as the angle of the sun shifts. Hopefully there'll still be enough. If there's enough for the impatiens, there should be enough for these. Even though impatiens, you know, we talk about them being a shade annual, they really do their best with some sun. It's just, I don't know, it's so dark over here. So much darker than I remember. The trees have grown, that's what they do. They grow every year. So I guess maybe the spots might end up being too shady for impatiens even in the future. I don't know. I'm still gonna, I got them, right? So I'm still gonna put them in the ground stuttered over my words you know what i'm saying so this will be really colorful i have pink and orange impatience to plant in front of this i'm going to fill it in to just be a big wave of color with these nice game changer hydrangeas behind them i alternated the colors so there's a white that's called picotee and then the pink and then the white here's the white there we go 
I'm glad one of them's in flower. It's a flower that's starting to wither away, but you get it. You kind of get the impression of what that one looks like. It's a white with a hint of sort of a blush pink. It's very pretty. The vanilla strawberry hydrangeas, I know, it's dark. You can't really see it. You can see that one. Look at them. They're so full and they're so happy. They responded well to their winter prune. They've only had a little bit of fertilizer. Just toss some garden tone on them because that's all I had around. I don't use the tones that often because the dogs eat it up and in containers it's not normally a problem. The Monstera, look at the tie. Tie's looking good. Has some hail damage. We had some pretty intense storms out here last week. But uh, considering, I think it's looking pretty good. Every new leaf that this plant is popping open has more and more of the big chunky variegation. I think I talked about when I moved this out about how the variegation on this one, I've talked about it for years, actually about how I've just never been all that impressed by it, but I just like the plant in general, so I don't really care. And it's just been rewarding me. One leaf a month, something like that, just great big, beautiful chunks. And that one, oh, it looks so good, doesn't it? It has a little bit of tricolor action, not like, to a point where like you would call it anything else. I just like the way the colors blend together and you get a tricolor effect. That's that's all I meant there. Love a Monstera, Zingerburs. Well, they're thirsty. It's afternoon now, so I'm not really all that surprised by that. I'm gonna turn the sprinklers on as soon as I'm done here. These are Zingerbur Myoga White Feather and Silver Arrow. You can see how they're doing, right? They need more sun. I'm not expecting much to happen with the ones that are down there. In fact, I'm thinking I'm gonna let these go up probably for another couple of weeks and I might lift these and move them somewhere else where they're going to get more morning sun because the spot is just starting to get more and more shaded so they just they're not thriving and I could put something else over here that would do a lot better I might even actually just fill this area in with hostas I think that'd be really pretty I think that would look really nice not everybody's crazy about hostas but I love them there's so many different types to choose from the Alexander like I said we'll talk more about these in depth next week when I'm working with them but make sure everybody has a look since it's been in a greenhouse for several months, I'd say it actually looks pretty good. And by the way, the place where the palm trees are stored, when I say greenhouse, it's a warehouse with a translucent roof and, and did I say roof? Roof. Translucent roof. And I think they keep it at like 55 to 65 degrees during the winter. So things like adenidias and coconut palms, heat lovers, don't do great in there, which is why I'm so glad that the Edinidias came back looking as good as they do. Also, probably partially because I potted them up with Moisture Max potting soil before I sent them out there so that I wouldn't have to worry about them withering away from not being watered. That made a difference. Not something I would grow them in all the time. For that circumstance, it was a good fit. Crinum, look at, I mean, do I need to, look at how beautiful it is. How much should I even say about it? It's the Persephone. Crinum lily, giant glossy green leaves. They're kind of torn up and mangled from the storms, but in a few weeks, this should be shooting up great big flower heads left and right. Oh yeah, look, see, just a couple hours. Look what a difference. That's what happens in the afternoon. They'll be fine. Don't worry, they're going to be okay. It's going to be fine. Sprinklers are going to go on in about 20 minutes. The sun's going to, not 20 minutes, probably 45 minutes. The sun's going to pop behind a tree, this tree right there. And the sprinklers go on and they'll pop right back up. Red spicata, coconut, just like the other one did fairly well during the winter time. I didn't struggle with spider mites on this one, and it was only about eight feet away from the other one. I still hit it with the neem. I hit everything with neem this winter several times. Well, not several times. Probably every other week to every two weeks, and then backed off and then had to amp it up. You know how that stuff goes. Pest control. But didn't have any pest issues with this one. It threw out, I think, two new fronds during the winter, which is pretty good, right? I talked about that the other one. The red spicata is just more colorful and I think a dwarf variety, so it's going to stay smaller. I'm not really all that concerned about that. Coconuts, when you're growing them in pots, generally when they're around 10 feet tall, which is a decent size, that's when they start to go downhill. So these are one of those plants where, like, I love it, but, you know, I'm probably going to have it for, like, maybe five to seven years, somewhere in there, just depending on the growth and everything. I don't know. Maybe, who knows, though? The growth space is heated, pretty warm and humid, and uh, you never know. I'll obviously try to keep them for as long as I can. And uh, the, we already talked about all these, didn't we? Yeah, we can move on from all this. So over here, I started to set up and stage the area and then stop myself because I want to film the process. I just got hyperactive and I wanted to get the Robolini palm put over here into the spot. Because it came back from the greenhouse looking good. Oh, it's kind of tattered right now, but again, pretty bad storms last night. The last few years, this has come back from the greenhouse not looking all that fantastic. It had a scale and a mealybug infestation, and I was really on top of spraying that last year. I really, I don't think I even had many flowers planted around it because of that. And before I sent it off, I hit it heavy, very heavy, 
with uh, neem and some soaps and that looks like it was a smart thing to do. It's come back looking great. Not a ton of fronds in there. I pruned a bunch off because when I set it here, they were dangling down in front of the door. So you walked the door, you got hit by a Robolini frond, which isn't fun because you know, they got the big daggers on the inside. But yeah, this is just, I just randomly pushed things that, well, actually I pulled things out of the way to pull the palm from down there over here, put it in place and I just set things down. This None of this is gonna be staying here. It's just sitting here and I, I don't mind it. I think it looks nice. Then over here we have the land of plants that are very mad at me because I've been gone for 10 days and there are many days they did not get watered, but they're bouncing back. They're going to be okay. It's mostly just wave petunias and things need to get in the ground and plants that I got repotted recently. I had to stake up the Musa Nono and the Musa Florida because, you know, storms. So it's been shifted around some in the container, which isn't great, but it did still open a new leaf. So that's encouraging. They should take those containers. It's just, it's not ideal for them to get blown around. Like I said, I wasn't here. wasn't anything I could do about it. And they should come around and end up looking fine in no time. Everything else that I repotted probably, I don't think there'll be much to say about them other than, well, these Dracenas right here, they were really bent because, well, I don't know, just watch that video if you want to know the story behind it, but they were angled in the wrong direction because the pots had fallen over, so they reaching for the sun, you know, all that stuff. I repotted them, moved them away from the sun, and most of them, or two of the three, so this one right here, this one over here, those have straightened out very nicely, and it's only been about a week and a half, and they've straightened out very nicely. This one right here still has a ways to go, but it was also almost at a 90 degree angle. This one had a really big bend in it, but it's, it's going to straighten out, no problem at all. They were in little nursery containers that just kept blowing over. So that's why I potted them up into something larger so they can do their thing. I'd like for these to put on as much growth as possible this year. I know these are traditionally just used as fillers and centerpieces for hanging baskets and just general arrangements, right? But I really like these because they're fairly cold hardy and I can keep them out here longer in the year. So typically I could probably have them out until November, maybe December during a mild fall, mild early winter and then just tuck them into the growth space for a couple months and I can bring them back out in March before I can move the other tropicals out. It's just something nice and green with a fresh look to it. And it's fun to have those plants around. You're not gonna be able to see it, but I got a passion vine planted over here. And, oh, well, that's a, that's a nice surprise. It's doing a lot of growing. I came in this area, pulled a bunch of stuff out, cleaned it up to the best that I could with the amount of time that I had, threw a trellis on the wall over there and popped a passion vine in there. It's just the blue, the cerulea. One of those should be a perennial on this spot, but we will see if they're hit or miss here. The May Pop is a native and hardy here, but I don't ever see them for sale. So that's why I just went with the classic Cerulea. And that really, it's actually one of my favorites, just that classic Cerulea passion flower. I think they have some of the best color on them. There are some really cool looking ones out there. Maybe it's a nostalgia thing. It's just what I grew up around when I would go to like Seattle and see them growing over the fences and everything out there during the summertime. It's something that just warmed my heart and it's, it's what I like to have out here. This is a new thing. Haven't ever done this before. So time will tell how it's going to do there, but this is a pretty warm spot. I plant a lot of stuff over here that should not overwinter well, and it always survives. Generally types of hidichiums that are not as hardy, which are butterfly gingers, those usually come up and do okay there. So I think the passion flower should be good. In theory, needle palms, they're looking good. I've been using the new palm fertilizer on them and uh i can't it's a little early i would say to say much about it but i feel like they're growing more this spring than they usually do and they flowered earlier too i'm sure their flowers are yeah they're gone by now you can see the inflorescence down there they did their thing and that's always a good sign it means they're nice and happy and they're popping up new stuff left and right the bigger they get the more floriferous <laughs> floriferous they tend to be this is a magnolia that is called the Cape Paris. I planted this one a few years ago in a video. It was just a twig and I always forget to show it. So here it is. I didn't forget, there it is. It is doing so well. It has been more hardy than the Bracken's Brown for me, definitely more hardy than the Little Gem and uh, the just regular Grandifloras that I see in neighbor's yards right by my house. This took zero damage this past winter and it's just a little baby. That's a really good sign. I'm a big fan of that magnolia. So these are the other two spots where I planted the canthus. There's one right there, one down at the base of this new hydrangea that I also just planted, which is a uh, limelight prime. I needed something to provide some privacy in this area because the yard, like if you're out here grilling, it just looks right into the neighbor's kitchen and it's weird and awkward. 
There was a big rose of Sharon tree here, but it got knocked back by some storms last year. So this is what I decided to go with. They don't get as large as the regular lime whites do. They stay small, about four to six feet, but they're supposed to start blooming earlier in this. Well, yeah, look at that. Panical hydrangea, May, and it's already setting bud. That's impressive. My strawberry vanillas, they won't start setting bud for at least another three to five weeks, something like that. The limelights around here, they generally start going by, I'd say, maybe mid to late June. So this one's a little bit earlier. Those have nice, strong, sturdy stems that aren't going to flop over. And uh, I think they pink out earlier than the regular lime whites do too. So you have more color and just overall a longer blooming season. I thought that that would be the perfect thing to put right here when it gets bigger. It's not going to get much bigger, but it'll probably be about like this. I'm thinking something like that. And that's going to provide a nice little screen. I like this better than the Rose of Sharon that was here before because the hydrangeas flush out with foliage much, much, much earlier in the season. A Rose of Sharon, they don't start doing much until it's warm right so like there's a rose of sharon tucked way over there it didn't start putting out any leaves on it at all generally until about may whereas these the panicle hydrangeas here where i live i should say they start to bud out in like march by mid-march into early april have that privacy screening back which is that's what i was going for privacy screening and color and yes i know everything's a mess over here i had a goal and I'm, i still want to try and do it even though some things are changing around here at least recently. I don't know if that's gonna be a permanent thing, but as far as scheduling goes, where I want to just come in here and redo this entire area and scrape it out, clean it up, get down some mulch and put in a shade garden. Oh, baby Grand Magnolia, look at that. Great big flower that was just starting to open this morning. Looks like it just popped open. It smells so freaking good. I love this magnolia. It's put on a good amount of size too. I feel like that's probably grown about eight inches, which is more than I would expect for a magnolia that's only supposed to get about 10 feet tall. Mule palm. It's, they've looked better. I've talked about this a few times. Both of them, I have two. The other one looks worse than this. They are getting a repot this year. I'm not necessarily bumping them up into a larger container, but the mix I put them just drains too fast. It takes a ton of water to keep these moving. Usually when you repot a mule palm, they respond very well to it. I put them into these new containers a couple of years ago with, a, I think it was in a spoma blend and something else. I was trying to go down the coconut route, of, you know, getting away from the peat and everything. And it, 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 no, it's not working. <laughs> Gonna go back to basics with that and give them what I was given before, which is just basic potting mix, adding some organics to it and some sand for drainage, but not too much. And I would imagine that it will flush back out nicely. It's actually flushed out very well, considering it was practically completely defoliated back in, I don't even remember, December, January, sometime during the winter. I let them take some pretty steep cold temperatures. I think it probably got down to about 15 or 14. And they looked okay, but they did what they do. And several weeks passed and they started to lose their fronds. I don't worry about that. You just throw some fungicide in there and they sprout back out. The main thing is getting them moving appropriately again, which is going to mean getting them, you know, getting a fresh mix down around those roots. And right now, all oh, the pot's full of clover. That's fun, I love clover. Speaking of clover, I plant it, okay, it doesn't look that great, but it's gonna look beautiful, trust me. This is the Trifolium Forlock Green Glow over here in what I have traditionally always called my dump garden. Really, it's just where I put plants for pollinators and natives or things that I would like to grow but just aren't working in the rest of the garden. They go up here into the hill garden. I have the Espalier apples, one right here, one over there, Liberty and Honeycrisp, which had some apples on them and I was really excited about it, but it looks like the storm may have blown those off because I'm not seeing them anymore. And that's okay. It's their first year in the ground. Hopefully they'll put out some more later. But I wanted to put in some more ground covery things just to help cut back on the weeds. And like I said, a lot of the weeds are natives. I don't freak out about those for the most part. It's, just, it's ground cover in general. It looks nice. If you have enough of it, you can cut back on some of your mulching. Oh, the star of the show's here. How you doing, Turbs? How you doing? Why did I acknowledge you? That just makes it worse. Now you're just going to stay here and look at the camera. I know you're very sleepy. Why don't you go over here? Why don't you go over there? Is there a toy over there? Look, is there a toy? Did I nope, not falling for it. You get the point. Trying to get some ground covers and some more stuff to grow down low here in the front of things. And that had a die back on it, which I fully expected. And it is starting to pop out lots and lots of nice, fresh green growth from down below. I also popped in, oh, I left the tag in just the perfect spot. Hookura Primo Mahogany Monster. It's really big, beautiful, red, vibrant foliage. And it's pairing very, very, very well with this pink diamond dicentra from Proven Winners. They're doing well over here. Not exactly like, you know, natives or 
pollinator. Well, they are pollinated. There's a bee on it right now. It's a pollinator plant. I can have a hookah in the pollinator garden. It's fine. Everything else, business as usual over here. There's some Onothera down there that's not doing much right now, but I think it will soon. And a coral beauty berry over there, something like that. It looks okay. I don't know. There just isn't much to say about it because it's not grown yet, but it's going to be really beautiful and colorful over there. Lots of Asclepias popping up right now. It just, uh, it just looks like leaves. So not a ton to say. Something um, that I skipped over <laughs> when I was talking about the queen palm was that I was surprised to see that the Hedicium in the back survived the winter in the greenhouse because they usually, the company usually pulls anything that planted underneath the plants out. So that, you know, they're watering less plants. I've always been fine with that, but sometimes things stick around. That Hedicium is right there. I think it's a Flavins, but I'm not positive. It was supposed to be a pink cone ginger, but that's not what I was sent. I waited a few months and it grew in, no, wrong plant, but smelled nice. So that's cool that that's there. And there's a speck of a Heliconia, Heliconia Adrian that I popped in there. That's fun. Always nice to have some bonus plants hanging around. Flower bags, they're, they're a pain in my butt, but they're beautiful, especially when they actually have flowers on them. They require a lot of water. When the drip gets set back up here in a couple of weeks, I think those are going to be much easier to care for. Okay, what else? I feel like that's like, it's kind of the gist of everything so far. Oh, and the garage planter, oh, it's the next day. I'm editing the video and remember that I forgot to talk about this one. So just a quick glimpse from my phone. Planted this one up, I don't know, a week or two ago, a few weeks ago, and it's doing really well. I have some salvia in here, some violet ice, blue ice, verbena in the front, some Lismachia, nice variegated one with some pink gomfrina, and some cosmos in the back. I'm doing very well considering I have it sitting over here in the driveway, surrounded by pavement and heat and has to be watered by hose and everything because you know the drip isn't set up. It hasn't been long so things haven't done much. The gomfrina though, it's starting to do its thing. It's looking pretty good. Oh, there they go. Sprinklers are going and got a feral beach ball over there. One thing that I did not update on is what's going on over here. So typically the last few years I have had a great big single trunked Edenidia palm right here. It's probably a good 12 to 14 feet high. It's pretty big, including the container. So probably a, you know, 11 foot tall palm. That doesn't matter. It's a good size. Well, um, it's not here because it died. Apparently it had trunk rot during the winter time. Are you okay? What are you barking at? That was unnecessary. And I also don't have the queen palms over here like I have in years past. There's one right here and one right there. One of them's here. It's down there laying on the ground because it needs a new pot. One of the queen palms died at the greenhouse and so did one of the Edenidias, this Edenidia. which is very unusual. The Edenidia, not surprised we talked about that. The queen though, they don't lose queen palms very often. They were even kind of mystified as to what happened with it, but I don't know, it died. They're bringing up two more. They have a truck down in Florida right now. And they're just gonna bring me a couple new ones for free, obviously, because you know they killed them. So it'll probably still be a couple more weeks until I landscape this area over here and get that moving, which kind of sucks. It's usually something I like to get done in mid-May, but it's all right. I've, I haven't had time to do anything the last couple of weeks anyway, so works out. There's more than enough to do out here, which is one of the things that is kind of nice about the garden tour being one, just so messy and chaotic, and being at a time where I haven't been able to really pay attention to what's going on out here. You know, like when you go on vacation, you're gone for a week or two, and you come home, it's like, oh, look at the garden. I was pretty surprised to see how big the sun impatience had already gotten, and the new leaf coming out on the redemption, and how wonderful the weeds are doing. Thriving. They seem so healthy. Having this be the May garden tour, there's going to be such a big difference between the May and the June because it, probably not tonight, but I was going to say tomorrow. I was going to say as soon as I put the camera down, but really more tomorrow, I'm going to be able to get the ball rolling, get these willow planters moved to where they need to go and get the palm pot set up over here and move everything around to where it's supposed to be and start planting the rest of the annuals that are down here. Things are going to look drastically different, and I am very excited about that. I am craving dirt on my hands. Do you know what I'm talking about? When it's like you just want a garden, but you can't because you know you're at work or life is happening. I just need that. Need that in my life. Just get my hands dirty, get things planted, get things moved around, and 
there's some picking up to do, like the hose. There's so, there's always there's always gonna be a hose up. We're just gonna have to learn to live with it. It's fine. But, you know, making things look like summer. A few weeks behind, but like I said, I wouldn't have had time to get to it. Anyways, if we weren't a couple of weeks behind, the tortoise garden. It, never mind. I don't know what I was gonna say. That area over there by the hill garden, there's weeds and things. I just gonna remind everybody it's gonna have a tortoise in there soon because the tortoise is in the house. And he's gonna eat all those weeds. I left those there for. Colby. Colby appreciates weeds. He's high baby. I know. I know. He's ready to go in. That doesn't happen very often, but you can tell he's looking pretty pooped. I think he wants to go inside and get some rest. I know I do too. Hey, I hope everybody's doing well. Sorry I missed the last up, but like I said, stuff's going on. Family emergencies, all of those things. You know, just life stuff happening. I'm grateful everyone's okay and uh, been supportive, which is also very nice, and I appreciate that. And next weekend, we got all kinds of fun stuff to do out here. Look at all these blank pots, blank, blank canvases in these containers. Start getting things planted up, get the color out here, and clear up some space down this side of the patio from where all the annuals are waiting to be planted up. Yeah, this is good. This is good. I'm pretty happy right now. All right, comment down below. Say hi. I love talking to everybody. What's going on in your gardens? May is over, right? By the time this video comes out, it's June. Y'all ready for summer? Only three weeks of spring. Spring? Only three weeks of spring left starting to see your annuals and tropicals start to move and respond to the heat. I know I am. It's one of my favorite times of the year when it warms up and everything just starts to explode and grow. Or, you know, just say hi. I love talking to everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. Have a great day, great life, and everything's going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.